it's you and welcome to another video. Today we are doing another story. We are doing the fourth book. Well, we're going to start the fourth book of the Clockwork Chronicles. Which is called The Final Obstacle. And yeah, basically we are starting with chapter one. And we'll see how it goes. And yeah, depending on how short, how long this chapter is, depends on whether or not we do two chapters. It's like... I, mean, I could do more than one chapter if I want to, but I don't have to. <laughs> it's just, yeah. If you like these kind of stories, be sure to leave a like and comment down any theories you might have for what might happen. And who we might see in the future. Because that'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah, anyway, let's get started. Chapter 1. Yeah, if you haven't read the other books, be sure you done so, because that's kind of important. <laughs> anyway, otherwise you'll miss some stuff and there'll be a lot of spoilers. <laughs> a lot of spoilers. It had been a long day in the lovely world. The clear blue sky contrasted against the white hall of light that was called the sun. There were no clouds in the s to be seen. Everything seemed to be perfect, calm and peaceful. Nothing out of the ordinary. The lovely world what many was what many would call a paradise, or at least the closest one that had come in a, to one in a very long time. Standing in front of one of the buildings that were currently being built from the ground up was a young boy that was about the age of 17. He had golden brown hair and deep blue eyes. He stood tall in his position, sitting beside a dog that looked just as determined as he did. The young boy was being a lookout for his friends, who were working on the building above making sure no one tried to attack them. But for the past month or two, nothing much had happened. It could be both a good thing, it could both be a good thing, but also something that to be unsure about because normally the group that handled these attacks wouldn't stay quiet for this long, especially when it had to do with destroying YouTubers which of his friends just happened to be. But there was much more than it. There were always was. The boy scanned the area carefully, carefully checking to make sure that there were no sign there was no sign of a threat. Even a hint of hint would have been better than complete silence. Were these men trying to get him to put his guard down? I hope not. But he really couldn't be sure. He looked down at the dog, who was sniffing the air cautiously. The boy, even more uneased when it turned up nothing. Sure, it was a good that nothing was out of the ordinary, but strange as well. Usually one of the men would be attempting to spy on them, waiting for a chance to strike. But there wasn't even a sign of even that going on. Completely nothing. What's that about? Everything good for you then, boy? The boy asked, curiously, watching as the dog growled in what sounded to be disappointment. 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 The boy sighed and shook his head. That's okay. We'll know if there's something, won't we? The dog wagged his tail slowly, letting out his tongue as he yipped with eagerness. The boy smiled and nodded. You're right. They won't even stand a chance, anyway. No matter how hard they try. He looked away from the dog and back over to his friend, where his friends were, frowning as he looked up at the progress above. It appeared they were already nearly done with the roof. The boy could see just about see his friends up on the roof, working hard. A, re, a reassurance that nothing had happened up there without his knowledge. Because he was absolutely helpless to do anything down here. His friends wouldn't allow him to come up onto the roof unless there was some safety precautions. The boy didn't blame them. 
But he didn't mind being a lookout either. He was willing to do what he needed to do and ensure his friends were safe, no matter what threat might the threat might be. He knew that it was important, especially since one of his friends had to deal with more than just than one danger. None of it had been any fault of his own. Sour taste formed in the boy's mouth as he swallowed back bitterly. He still couldn't believe just how much had happened in the last nine months or so. He could be sure. But he knew that things would only get more and more intense after what had happened a couple months earlier. It all started when he met his friend, orange and white ginger cat with his forest green eyes. When he'd met the cat, the feline had saved him from being kidnapped by one of Mr. A's men. The same man that led the charge to destroy all the YouTubers. Which included new, his new friend, Stumpy. At first, he hadn't thought much about his new friend, only missing his home until realizing what he'd just stumbled into. Apparently, Mr. A's men had been ordered to keep an eye on the cat for months, his world having been found by the traitorous Gerald, who had accused him of what he'd done and lied to the cause who were supposed to be protecting the YouTubers. The boy had saved his friend time and time again from downfall and even death. He'd met new friends along the way and lost friends as well. One of them caused a bad ripple effect for his friend, leader of the cause. Eli had, been gi had given up his own life to allow the boy and the cat's sister, Nettie, to escape recapture from Mr. A's men. The boy was glad they'd managed to get out of that alive, but it still meant that they all had to be even more cautious now than ever before, because there were still people in the cause who would be more than happy to get the cat, get to the cat if given the chance to. He did not want that to happen. He let out a sigh as he shook his head, his mind revisiting all the memories he'd had with his friend and the horrors he'd seen the man and his brother RJ due to his friends. Sure, Gerald had incidentally been crashed, crushed by the debris of the creeper explosion, but Mr. A was still at large. He didn't need RJ to fulfill his plans, even though he was locked in prison as of this moment, of that moment. The man was smart and unpredictable. Yeah, this was why silence like this could never be a re really be a good thing. Really didn't want to worry about his friends. It never hurt to be careful anyway. The boy could hear sounds from above him as he heard laughter in a conversation in full session. The boy didn't pay too much attention to it because he knew that if it was important enough, they would tell him about it. He just needed to do his part, however small it appeared to be. It still felt important. He stood there for what felt like t forever, when it probably was only 10 to 15 minutes before he could hear someone trying to climb down from the roof. He looked up to see Stumpy jumping down, landing perfectly on his feet as he did so, his iron boots gleaming brightly in the sunlight, and the cat smiled cheerfully at the boy. Mind if I drop in for a moment? No, I forgot something important for the roof. The cat said sheepishly with a casual shrug. Of course you did. The boy chuckled. Doesn't it happen to be in the chest? Yeah, pretty sure it does. The cat chuckled as he went over to the chest and opened it. Rummaging through as he attempted to search for whatever he needed. How far do you think you are on the roof? The boy asked. The cat had Stumpy pulled something out of the chest. As he put it safely away in a pocket. He closed the chest and shrugged. Hmm. I'd say maybe another 20 minutes. It shouldn't be long. The cat mused. Everything go good down here? Just thought I'd ask. Nothing that I know of, the boy said. Not even a helicopter. Right. I think we'd all know if that was if it was that obvious. <laughs> the cat muttered with a beaming smile. But they aren't being so obvious this time, the boy pointed out. At least they aren't attacking us, the cat with a sigh. Last thing I want is to be almost done with something and to be attacked by those men and having them mess everything up. 
I thought the worst thing that could happen is a creeper blowing up one of your bills to get away at Casey. Catch up. True. A building can be rebuilt. Living, breathing being can't. Right. The boy nodded. That's a very valid point. Sure is. The cat agreed. As he went over to the building and managed to climb his way back up, up to the roof. And the boy waited until he disappeared from sight before looking back around the building. At the building. Surrounding them. There were buildings surrounding them. There were places where someone could be hiding. Sneakily watching them doing whatever they were doing. In the shadows. There were so many. There were so many of them. <laughs> Even the shadows seemed suspicious. Since they helped the men blend in. They're nearly complete black uniforms. The only thing that wasn't black was their blue armbands to match the color of their bl the blue clock that could be found on the side of the helicopter, signifying the men's plan to destroy the YouTubers for everyone to see. It was also a perfect trademark for them as well, seeing as they used it plenty of times before. The boy scanned the area once again, slowly trying to ensure that he hadn't missed anything. But if something was out there, wouldn't the dog have alerted him? Maybe the men were getting better at hiding, or they were just planning something else. What could it be? He was so sure. He shook his head again as he let out a sigh, wanting to safely say that there wasn't anything out there that could threaten his fence. But he never could be so sure these days. That was the problem. Even though it was good that they weren't attacking, didn't mean that he couldn't let down his guard, especially if that's what the men wanted him to do. About 20 minutes passed before the boy could hear more commotion on the roof, and he looked over to see that his friends were cleaning up whatever mess they had left behind and preparing to climb down to the ground. He waited quietly, watching them eagerly climb down one by one. First step, he came down, landing gracefully on his feet, as expected for a cat. Next came a yellow duckling with big, expressive ocean blue eyes. She gave the boy a cheerful smile of a greeting. It was the boy returning. Behind her, a beaver in colored leather armor <laughs> jumped down as well. Sturdy and firm, no sign of tumbling or tripping over himself. You look bored, <laughs> duckling mused with a chuckle as she approached the boy. Glad to see we're done for the day, the boy shrugged. I wouldn't say I was bored, but it has been pretty calm and uneventful day. You're not wrong, the cat replied with a slight smile. We've got the outside done, at least. With little distractions while we were at it. Sure, Stampy, the duckling said slowly. I recall you forget got one of the most important things to the roof today. <sighs> hey, my pockets were full. I couldn't possibly carry everything squishy, the cat said with a laugh. At least I had it somewhere. All right, I'll give you that. The ugly mused as she looked over at the boy with an expression of amusement. It's good to see you've kept the dog company. Sam nodded as he looked over at the dog, who had gone to his feet and bounded over to his master, who had squatted down to pet the dog, scratching his behind the ears. Aww. Well, at least we got the heads up if the target ever tries to sneakily steal my dogs from another... Under my nose, the cat said without taking a wink. Ah, how many times have you tried that? The boy asked. Far too many. Squish, she said with a soft groan, rolling her eyes toward the sky before smiling. Stampy is far smarter than gives them credit for. I don't always do it by myself, you know. The cat pointed out. It doesn't matter how do you do it. You still manage to outsmart him. Squish, she replied. That's impressive. Speaking of how many years he's tried to steal your little friends. The cat chuckled as the dog went to lick his face. The cat pushed the boy gently, getting to his feet. I'll do anything for my dogs and my friends. No one gets in the way of me and, my, and those I care about. That's why I like you so much. The chuckling said, getting the cat to chuckle again as he opened the chest one more time. Might be a good idea to return to the extras to the storage room, the cat replied. Since we're not going to need these for the inside anyway. 
Is that all you're going to do today? Gwen, she asked curiously. Maybe we could go out somewhere. Fancy tonight? Kent shook his head and smiled. Maybe later. I want to make sure everything's sorted for tomorrow. There's always time to do it tomorrow night, though. Her face brightened and nodded. Sounds good to me. Right, then. We need to get back to the house and get things ready for tomorrow, the cat replied, glancing over at the boy. Would you like to give me a hand with it? It would be my pleasure, Stampy. The boy said with a smile. Very well, come on now. Follow me, the cat replied. Since I can't really be alone anymore, it seems. I know, Sam. Ah, the boy laughed. There's a reason for that. I know, Sam. The cat replied simply. I'm taking it as seriously as I can, since the light hit the target. Mr. A is very is a very big threat. And the target can only do so much with only him and Viva Dash. Viva Dash and his pirate. Mr. A has a full-fledged team on his side. Yeah. At this time, the parrot is good. I don't know if that will change. But at this point, he's on it to talk. So. <laughs> I had to add the parrot. Because the parrot is kind of iconic now. <laughs> it's not iconic yet, but it is iconic. <laughs> like, you always got to keep an eye out for him. Always. Anyway, both are stoppable, Squish, she added with a smile, if we work together. Yeah, the can nodded. You two really saved me back there those couple of months ago. Even before then. That's what friends are for, Stampy, the boy said confidently. We're there for each other, having each other's backs no matter what happens. Yeah, Squish she agreed with a nod. Those men didn't scare me. Those men don't scare me. Boy got the cat, cat finished because Wolf's ball. So we knew something he wasn't letting on. Better hope they don't catch you saying that, or they might try to find a way to scare you. She took and shook her head slowly. She made friends by my side. Nothing can stop me from doing the right thing. I like your confidence. The cat said with one smile. And if I could help, no, the duckling blushed slightly as the cat chuckled. All four of them walking back towards the house. Oh. <laughs> The boy walked slightly behind them as he looked over his shoulder once or twice to make sure no one was trying to follow them before continuing, half listening to the duckling and the cat joking around, having a laugh. It was charming and something he didn't take for granted. It was rare to see his friend so happy. So when he saw his friends just chatting with the duckling, the boy knew it was as it was meant to be, happy, carefree, and peaceful. How it was before Mr. A ruined everything. Before Gerald even knew about the lovely world and trying to destroy the cat's life in the process. Before the boy even knew that the world, this world even existed. This was pure joy. Perfect happiness. Nothing scary, threatening, or deadly coming for them. Just call a few friends in a world that felt like something from his fantasy. But the boy didn't know any better. He could almost say it was just a fairy tale. But he knew it wasn't. Far from it. But at least he could enjoy this moment and hope it would continue to last for a long time to come. Where fear and worry didn't exist. Where joy and freedom was the only thing that mattered in the world. Where everything was beautiful and full of wonder. This was the lovely world he knew. One that wasn't corrupted or ruined by Mr. A and his crazy men. Only had a hunger for vengeance. Join pain and suffering from their victims. Drawing on their fear and hopelessness. They had no place in this world. That was a good thing. They deserved to be. Anyway, that is going to be the end of this chapter. I hope you guys enjoyed. And yeah, be sure to leave down any theories in the comments below. And yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy it. Goodbye.